Aubrey Miller is joining us. He is set to play football for Deion Sanders at Jackson State. I'm Brian Fenley. I'm on Fox Sports Radio, and it feels like yesterday, Aubrey, when I would cover your high school football practices, man, it was so humid out there. I don't know how you guys did it, <laughs> and not only did you practice, but you went your senior year 15-0, and won a state championship. I want to ask you about that because it's been a couple years removed since then. But the number one question coming out of the gate here, Aubrey, is after spending some time playing football at Missouri, why did you decide to go the HBCU route and join Deion Sanders at Jackson State? Um, I mean, like I said, uh, one thing I say, that everything happens for a reason. Um, I feel like I've grown so good in Missouri as, as far as maturing as a man and maturing as a guy on and, off, on and off the field as well as knowing what it takes to be in, to have leadership. And, um, you know what I'm saying, through the injuries and, and through the time of me being out, it was just a blessing in disguise when Coach Deion Sanders actually took the job at, uh, at Jackson State. Um, I feel like that was a big opportunity as far as have be exposed to great people. You know, Deion Sanders has great connections from being a legend in the league. And um, not only that, I mean, being a part of history. You know, a lot of people don't get an opportunity like this to be taken down. It's just, a, you know, like you think about the swag. Um, you think about like a low grade. That's what a lot of people do. And that's how, it, that's how basically like a lot of college teams display swag teams. So for me to be a part of history, you know, and to make a team better, I mean, I want to take this shot. The recruiting class that you're a part of going to Jackson State, as Dion said on Instagram, is the best ever for an HBCU. I think there are eight guys that were formerly in Power Five conferences going to Jackson State, three stars, four stars. You were a four star going to that program. What does it say, Aubrey, about Dion? in him taking this job when this guy is as accomplished as can be he can do so many different things but he chooses to funnel his time into this entity uh i mean one word that describes it to me is he's contagious i mean you see his style of play you see how he operates you see how he talks i mean who does want to be coached by a guy like that um you see his staff you know they're very confident one of the biggest thing is they're very excited every time it's always high spirits you know, and not only that, I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll back you up for anything you do. Like, you know, he, he loves juice. He loves dogs. That's his key things, dogs. And uh, I mean, that, that's very contagious if you ask me. Aubrey Miller is with us, Jackson State football player. I'm Brian Fenley. How about the way in which you feel like you're going to fit in there? Because you came from a different scheme with the Missouri Tigers. And so what do you know so far as to how I know it's early, you guys haven't had spring ball yet, but how at least you want to be utilized or how you think the team and the coaching staff is going to want to try to utilize you? Um, I mean, I think we're going to be utilized in many ways, kind of such as, as how it was at Warhaven. Um, I vary from um, Sam to Mike and Will. You know what I mean? I'm very versatile. So, I mean, not only that, uh, I mean, I think they're going to use me as much many ways as possible. I mean, I'm down for it, you know. Uh, my love for the game is just to be out there and make energy, make noise. So, you know, that's what I love to do. And, you know, I'm willing to do whatever they want me to do. You said you're looking forward to making history and specifically making noise for an HBCU. Knowing that in the past, the HBCUs have not gotten the credit they deserve. What does it mean to you to be there? And why are you compelled to see this kind of program rise to heights it's never experienced before? I mean, one thing I think about, I don't I don't really think about um, is, is if it's going to work. I mean, I know it's going to work. Not only that, just, just bringing the noise, having a platform of basically the internet. You know, Dion has a, a, a huge platform over the world. Um, we think about football and stuff like that. So not only that, I mean, bringing the spotlight to black colleges is, is one of the biggest things I feel like this in the world. I mean, you, you think about everything that's going on in the world now um, involving black people is not good. So why not educational wise? Why not bring our kind to the school? Not only that, why not win? Why not have all these four or five stars going to the school? So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of one thing that stick out to me is, you know, when we talk about it, uh, HBCUs is one, one school that I feel like can rise because of the talent that we are bringing.
you were super talented in high school at Whitehaven, which for those who are not from Memphis, that's a Memphis community, which I used to spend a lot of time covering you guys when I worked in Memphis for a local TV station. And obviously you were balling out there. But when you think of the impact that to this day you want to have on that community, not only Whitehaven, but Memphis, when they think of Aubrey Miller, what do you want them to think? Uh, I mean, a changed guy. Um, I think I say that uh, a changed man. You know, I'm I'm a guy who kind of basically grew up off of mistakes. Um, I mean, yeah, everybody knows when I was back in the city. You know, I, I had so much energy. Uh, so many people room for me. You know, I want I want them to understand that I'm a guy who never quit it. Uh, I'm a guy who's seen a lot of situations. You know, and those times I really feel like I was done. You know. But the biggest thing is, I just don't want them to know I never quit it. I was a guy who always hardworking. I want to be recognized for being a hard worker. Uh, knowing that I'm always representing my city. My dad used to always elaborate that whenever people look at me, they look at Miller on my back. So, you know, I always want to carry that name well. You know what I mean? Not only that, I want them to see me as a respectful guy, somebody who was very determined. And, you know, like I said before, just the biggest thing is seeing a changed man, uh, seeing a young boy grow into a grown man, not only through the game of football, but through the struggles of life. One man who also has helped you get into that frame of mind is your high school football coach in Coach Salisbury and, and someone who means so much more to his players than just the coach role that he plays. Why is it so valuable to him and why does he go out of his way, Aubrey, to see his guys thrive and I'm not talking just in football I'm talking about in life I'm talking about moving forward after high school and, and building that career or taking your life to better to better things after high school I mean coach Salisbury knows that the community that's around it I mean it's not a lot of attention you know I mean other people look at it as they call it the hood uh, other people call it the ghetto whatever you want to call it but coach Salisbury knows that it's, it's hidden talent there not only that, you have plenty of guys that come to the school, and I feel like the biggest thing is, you know, I mean, he treats us like we're his own kids. He has one of his own. And that's one of my closest friends, uh, Little Rodney Salisbury, you know. And uh, like I, I kind of, my father and Coach Salisbury grew up together as well. But I feel like the biggest thing is he understands that his race doesn't get the attention that we need, and you know, for him to help us, he has to, you know, basically he has to put on for schools. Not only big schools, but any type of school. I mean, I don't see this guy get everybody into school. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's hard or not, uh, I just feel like the biggest thing is he just, he knows that he has a reputation. His reputation is a very positive one. And I feel like he wants to keep that going. Not only that, he has guys who's going to remember that. Uh, connections is one of the biggest things as well. Uh, having these guys go to schools, having these guys do great jobs. I mean, it's always going to be connections. It's always going to be leeway to make positive impact for Whitehaven. The, the reputation also of Whitehaven football players going on and playing at the college level is becoming like so profound. You were one of so many out of that graduating class your senior year to go on and, and play at the collegiate level. Why has Whitehaven become that, that factory for guys? You look at Cormonte Hamilton with Ohio State or Dante Vaughn who went to Notre Dame and is now with the Chargers organization. I mean, I'm just starting the list. There's so many more that I could add, including yourself. Like, how has it become so dominant? And because it has, how has it affected the rest of the high school football community in Memphis? I mean, the environment. The environment was, it was a key thing, just being around that type. I mean, you've been out there, man. Yeah. You've seen what type of days we've had where it was working. Uh, I mean, it was plenty of fights. It was plenty of struggles between ourselves, but we already knew the only enemy we could have was us. Nobody else could defeat us but us. You know, through practice, through hard practices, through the helmets, click clacking, all that stuff. Coach Harmon, Coach D, a lot of the coaches staff bringing the energy every day. That was the biggest thing. Coaches fed into the energy. And I'm pretty sure the same thing Coach Dion is going to do. Not to change the subject, but yeah, like that was the biggest thing, man, man the environment. Uh, also, he always reminds us where we come from. He always reminds us what the people, like the people in the stands, what they was here for. You know, it wasn't just us, I would say. You know what I mean, it was the fans, the boosters they fed in. It, it was, man, I get chills just by thinking about it. You know what I mean? But it, it was the environment, if you ask me. 
I bet you also get chills when you think about winning the state championship in 2016 and specifically the fact that you guys did it after being down all game and then the fourth quarter arrived and then all of a sudden you guys turned it on. What were the biggest turning points from that game in that fourth quarter that you felt allowed you guys to come back and win that state title in dramatic fashion? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing was, I mean, I, I put it on myself. Uh, the beginning of the game, me just being disciplined. You know, when, when you want to go out there and make a certain tackle, when it's not your tackle to make, sometimes they can mess up a whole game. I mean, after that, after that one mistake, I mean, we were basically clicking after that. I mean, we, we all knew what type of defense we had. We knew what type of offense we had. But it was just the main thing about being disciplined, having perseverance, and finishing. And at the end, our offense marched down the field, and we ended the game on defense at the end. So, I mean – to be honest, I think it was our will to fight. I mean, everybody had their thoughts in their head, like, damn, okay, we're down a, a bit. But, I mean, everybody knew that we, I mean, we travel all this way. Two schools already want to stay. We're not about to let nobody down, man. I mean, we're undefeated. You know what I mean? So, why not, man? Well, why not go win it? And, I mean, we, we did with the grace of God, though. I'm not even going to lie. Can't just say it was us. I mean, God was the most definitely on our side. Ari Miller is with us, Jackson State football player. I'm Brian Fenley. And then after that game in the locker room, when Coach Rodney Salisbury had a chance to congratulate his players and you were there, what was that experience like in that moment? I mean, to be honest, it wasn't real to me. It wasn't real to a lot of guys. Coach Salisbury has done it before. So for me, I, I don't feel like there was a big, very emotional to him. I mean, it was, it was what was expected. So Salisbury, I've always been preaching about it. He's always been preaching about coming with your A game, keeping your head straight. You know what I'm saying? Don't let no punks come in our way or none of that. You know, that was one of the main things Coach Salisbury carried us, you know, was having dignity, knowing what you're doing it for. And, you know, after the game, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it, man. I'm holding a gold ball, but I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I was used to winning, though. I'm not even going to lie to you. I mean, before that, yeah, I, I won a gold ball in middle school. Uh it was, it was a lot of things that, that took place. I mean, even in Simmer League, Little League, I won a championship. But me winning a state title like that in that type of game, it was it was a feeling I couldn't imagine. I mean, I think I really felt it when we first got the rings. Like, when I first got my ring and I sat there and looked at it with the W on it, I was just like, yeah, we did this for the hood. You know, and, and that's one of the biggest things. Like, just knowing that I did it for the community of White Haven, knowing that my grandmother, my grandfather who came up out of that, my dad, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that they always proud of me. I just knew I did something that a lot of people couldn't do for the city of Memphis. Not only Memphis, but what hey. What was it like to play with Kylan Watkins? Because it was so fun. Every game, he was a human highlight reel. I have so many of his highlights still saved on my phone, Aubrey, when he would zigzag around defenses. And I know he was so big in the state championship as well. Uh, man, Kylan probably... Hands down, best running back I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I mean, you've seen the high school clips just like I have. I mean, it, it was it was a blast. I mean, he really taught me a lot of things that other running backs could do, that could not do what he does. You know what I mean? Me seeing that high caliber, seeing a guy that can stick his foot like that, be able to run through gaps, be able to break tackles like that. I mean, get, you got to imagine the practice. And, and before that, I mean, I, I had my challenges, you know, tackling a guy like that, uh, make sure I take the right angles, make sure I pursue the right way. I mean, that's one guy that can run one side of the field and cut it back. You know what I mean? So that, that was one of the guys who taught me, like, my pursuit angles, being able to go from sideline to sideline. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I give my hats off to him. I mean, he, he really made a great linebacker. I'm pretty sure he say, think, say the same thing about me. But, um, I mean, me, man, me playing with Kyle, that was probably one of the best memories of my life knowing that we was probably two of the top guys in Memphis that year. I mean, he should have won Mr. Football that year, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, they were probably one of the best players I've ever had in my life. Oh, man, it was such a treat to watch that season, your senior year. My final question for you, Aubrey, is give us a timeline of how it's going to look for you as you get to Jackson State. Like, when does spring ball start? When do you move there? And how do you start to mesh yourself into the community? Um, I mean, I, I go there as soon as possible. So beginning of January 4th, um, I think the first game starts in uh, either February or March. Not confident, not for sure. But uh, basically, that's what the time I mean. I've spent 
two years basically not playing football, you know, due to the injury. And I had a whole year, thank God, I mean, with COVID, to be able to repair myself, be even better than I was last time. So, I mean, going into the season, I mean, I, I think I'm coming right off the bat and I'm playing, be able to get back in pads and, you know, get to my old self. Oh, I can't wait. You've got so much to prove because you have all the talent. You're healthy. We're rooting for you. We'll be supporting you. I can't wait to hear how it all goes down. We'd love to do this again with you following this team. Everybody that is watching this support Aubrey Miller, Jackson State football, Deion Sanders, and this ever-growing program that is certainly on the rise. And Aubrey is going to play a big part in that. Thanks so much, man, for doing this. Love talking about those old memories. And let's do it again sometime. Yes, sir. You already know. One thing I got to say, respect the Haven, baby. You already know. <laughs>